KPFA is thrilled to present KPFA's Drag Time Story Series in celebration of Pride Month. In light of the recent discussions surrounding drag story hours, we believe it is important to provide an opportunity for everyone to experience and reflect on this unique form of storytelling. The Drag Story Time series features captivating video and audio recordings of readings accompanied by insightful conversations with drag performers, authors, a publisher, and a parent. Through these recordings, we aim to challenge the calls for bans and encourage thoughtful consideration of the positive impact drag story hours can have on children and their families. You can access all the captivating episodes of the Drag Story Time series on our website, kpfa.org, or visit our YouTube channel at KPFA Radio. Don't miss the chance to engage with these thought-provoking conversations and witness the power of drag performers as they captivate young minds with their imaginative storytelling. Our second reading was by Panda Dulce to kindergartners at Silvia Mendez Elementary School in Berkeley. After Panda's reading, teacher Laudes Rivas read their small children's book and spoke with us about it. Please enjoy this episode of Drag Story Time, which recently aired live on KPFA Radio. What's up with Drag Story Time? Hi, happy Pride. I'm EA for KPFA Community Powered Radio. With all the fuss lately about drag story hours, people in fabulous outfits and makeup reading stories to children, some of us here at KPFA thought you'd like to hear and see for yourselves. So we're bringing some to you. We hope you enjoy our little video and audio drag story time series. Find them all on our website, kpfa.org. For this second installment, we went to the Berkeley Unified School District to hear drag queen Panda Dulce give a storybook reading to kindergartners for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. It is May, the month of May, Mayo. Do you know what that means? No. Well, it means it's almost summer, but it also means it's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. My birthday's after summer. Me too. I'm Chinese American, and this is my month, even though it's Asian American Pacific Islander lifestyle. But because it's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, I have some stories to tell you. Do you like stories? Yeah. yeah! I love stories, and this is one of my favorites. It's called My Princess Boy. My Princess Boy by Cheryl Killer Davis. My Princess Boy is four years old. He likes pretty things. Pink is his favorite color. How many of you like pink? (gasps) Isn't it a great color? I love that color. He plays dress up in girly dresses. He dances like a beautiful ballerina. My princess boy has a cool brother. How many of you have a brother? I have two brothers. Wow. I have two brothers. Okay. Oh, oh, that's so many brothers. Wow. So many siblings. Wow, that's a lot of siblings. I got baby brothers. I got a little, I got a brother that's mine. And I got two sisters. 14. That is so many brothers and siblings and sisters. Uh, yes, I love how you raise your hand quietly. Yes. I have one god sister and one god brother. Wow. Thank you for so much for sharing. Well, he has a very cool brother. His b- brother plays baseball and soccer. And his brother dances with my princess boy. My princess boy loves his brother. My princess boy loves his dad. His dad tells my princess boy how pretty he looks in a dress. His dad holds his hand and tells him to twirl. My princess boy smiles and hugs his dad. (coughs) Sounds really sweet, very kind. My princess boy has playdates with boys and girls. He likes to climb trees in his princess boy tiara crown. When he plays dress up, he likes to change clothes a lot. He wears a green ballet leotard and dances with his friends. I love my princess boy. When we go shopping, he is the happiest when looking at 
girl's clothes. But when he says he wants to buy a pink bag or a sparkly dress, people stare at him. And when he buys girl things, they laugh at him. And then they laugh at me. It hurts us both. I think it's nice to laugh at people? No. I don't think so either. Once my princess boy wore a dress at his birthday party. He welcomed his friends to his home and he said, I am a princess boy. He put on jewelry and he liked how pretty he looked and waved his princess boy wand. And then, my princess boy was a princess for Halloween. Who could have guessed it? He went trick-or-treating with his brother. One woman laughed at him because he was in a princess dress. My princess boy asked, why did she laugh at me? I told him some people don't think boys should wear dresses. Is it nice to say people don't say, shouldn't I'm wear a, dresses? I'm a girl, so I wear dresses. Well, sometimes you can wear a dress even if you're not a girl. Every, ev anybody Everybody can wear dresses. dresses. That's and right. Any, any dress clothes is now. anything. Like, yes. a, a, every person it just the, wears what they wear, and yeah. Preach, yes. I love that gospel. Thank you. I'm wearing a dress. So am I, girl. But a princess boy can wear a dress at his school, and I will not laugh at him. And a princess boy can wear pink, and I will tell him how pretty he looks. A princess boy can play with me in pretty girl clothes, and I will still play with him. If you see a princess boy, will you laugh at him? No. no. Will you call him a name? No. No. Will you play with him? Yes. Will you like him for yes. who he is? Yes. That's really sweet. I think that's a win. Our princess boy is happy because we love him for who he is. My princess boy is your princess boy. That's it. You all have been such a good audience. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Now a round one. Round one, yeah. Now a quiet applause. Yeah, yeah. Now side to side. Good job! Oh, how did you like the book? Good! Yay. Yeah? Yes, you have a question. I play soccer today. Wow, I love soccer, and so does Princess Boy's brother. Yes. I love soccer. Soccer's great, it's a fun one. Okay, one more question from someone we haven't heard from. Yes. Do you have a castle? I do, but I can't tell you exactly where it is because it's a secret. Okay, fine. Yay. It is. Three rainbows north, four pink clouds to the left, and then make your first right at the lavender cloud. Got it? Got it. Okay, so you can write me whatever you want, but don't ask me to repeat it, because I really won't remember it again. I won't remember it. Good. Have a good memory, then. We're here with the kindergartners of Berkeley Unified School District for Drag Queen Story Hour with Panda Dulce. We just heard the book My Princess Boy by Cheryl Kilodavis. Stay tuned for the next book, Whoever You Are, by Josephine Wei Lin. Whoever you are, I love you more than the stars above. Whoever you are, my baby love. Maybe you like blue. Who likes blue? Me! Who's my favorite color? Me too. Who likes pink? Oh, yeah. Pink is great. It's great. Maybe you believe gender is something to rethink. Maybe you'll wear sparkles or stripes. Some of you are wearing stripes right now. 
or break free from gender stereotypes. Maybe you like dolls or trucks, no doubt. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to find out. Maybe you'll be an engineer, activist, CEO, doctor, dancer, or a weirdo. <laughs> or maybe you'll be a superstar. What matters the most is you're 100% who you are. Because you can't tell gender just by body part, you'll have to tell us what's inside your heart. There's more than just he and she. She and they. Ooh. And them. Gender is a spectrum of possibility. Quiet and loud and soft and strong. You being you, there's no way to be wrong. From who you love to the color of your clothes, whatever you're into, I won't try to impose. If you want to wear pink, that's totally fine. Want to wear blue? That's totally fine. Just let me know before you try to wear my clothes. <laughs> And as you find what's authentic and true, I'll be there to love every version of you. Every version. I'll be your guide. I'll show you the way. But babe, y'all are teaching me every day. Now go take the lead. What will you become? You can be anything. You could be anyone. More than anything you can think of. I love whoever you are. My baby love. The end. That's all the time we have for story time before we get the wiggles, maybe, next lures, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You just heard Panda Dulce reading the book, Whoever You Are, by Josephine Way Lin. After story time, we caught up with Panda about what inspires her to do drag story hours and what she is looking forward to this Pride Month and beyond. Hi, my name is Panda Dulce and I go by she, her pronouns. You can totally call me Panda. So I'm one of the founding members of the Drag Story Hour program. I've been doing this since 2017 and... When I do a reading, I get a wide spectrum of responses from kids. Like, as we know, they're kids. And so, you know, sometimes they have the wiggles. Sometimes they're, like, actually staring um, completely enraptured. Uh, but largely, the reaction I get is similar to that of seeing a Disney princess, I guess. It's just like, what is this magical being, <laughs> this entity that I'm suddenly faced with? Um, or what is this magical being that I'm suddenly coming to face to face with? Um, and I just remember when I was in elementary school, story time was my favorite time um, because I got to blossom images in my head. I got to imagine what I could be, what kind of plots I would encounter throughout my life. Um, and I remember how animated my librarians were and my teachers were. And it's really an honor to be a part of that process and to let children just imagine the world ahead of them. What are you excited about for Pride this year? What feels important to celebrate? I think this Pride, it's important to celebrate our resilience and visibility. Um, drag queens are some of the most visible <laughs> beings on the planet. Um, and who wouldn't notice us caked in glitter with sky-high wigs, right? Um, we've been through a crucible of the three years with the pandemic um, in terms of just being able to connect in person, one-on-one -on -one together, in larger settings, and even more so when it comes to the erosion of queer and trans rights across the country, um, censorship masquerading as freedom, and just the whole gamut of oppressive regimes that are being advanced. Um, 
throughout all of that, we are still here. And I think it's important to acknowledge that visibility, yes, comes at a cost, and also it is critical. I did not have this kind of representation when I was little. I remember some of the first Asian American representations I saw was Rufio in Hook, um, who was a Filipino American actor, Dante Bosco. It was the first Asian American I saw who wasn't treated as the punchline of a joke or as a dismissible perpetual foreigner. He was empowered and he was punk. And it is an honor to just to be a symbol of powerful Asian American representation for people and queer Asian American representation for people. You can tell in some of the children who might be on the queer trans spectrum when they see you, they have an immediate connection. It's like looking in the mirror for the first time. And that anchors them and will anchor them as they grow, just like Rufio did for me. And to think that there are people advocating for a paucity of representation who want to stifle the diversity of our world as it exists is just unthinkable and inhumane. And so representation is flourishing and we are met with like violence and we will survive it as we always have. You are listening to KPFA's Drag Storytime series. I'm lead producer Cinnamon Sugar Shoes. We'll be right back after a quick message about KPFA Radio. KPFA Radio is a community-powered, listener-supported radio station based in Berkeley, California. We are able to bring you this content through donations and support from our listeners. Please consider supporting KPFA through a donation by visiting www.kpfa.org donate. And now let's get back to the program. I'm Cinnamon Sugar Shoes. Welcome back to Drag Story Time. Drag Story Hour is the Grand Marshal of SF Pride this year, and so I imagine there might be a performance or some kind of presentation on the SF Pride stage. Um, Besides that, I am producing a short film with a Sundance grant called After What Happened at the Library based on an incident at San Lorenzo Library last year. Um, And so that should be out in early 2024. And I'm excited for that. That was drag queen Panda Dulce speaking with us at Berkeley Unified School District after doing a story hour for kindergartners. The class teacher, Lourdes Rivas, also wrote a wonderful book for kids about non-binary identity. And while the class was at recess, they took some time to speak with us and read us their book. My name is Lourdes Rivas, and I'm the author of They Call Me Mix. The inspiration for this book really came about Uh, me telling this story over and over year after year and finally just deciding to make it into a book and something that I can carry and and have pictures for Um, and initially I had the thought of just making one book for just myself in my classroom and that would be it Um, but then friends um, encouraged me to put it out there in the world and I took the leap and made it into something that had a further reach and but initially it was just gonna be used for me in my classroom. Do you find it helpful in the classroom? It's just a way to demystify like non-binary identity? Yeah, usually at the beginning of the school year, I teach kindergarten, so they're very young when they come in, they're practically preschoolers. Um, I'll just read the first few pages um, just to introduce myself and the word the the concept of not being just a girl and not being just a boy and then slip in the the non-binary term and my pronoun Um, and then I'll usually reread the story once again in the spring once they're a little older and I'll do a whole read through of the entire book and they'll say I remember that story Um, but we'll get more into the the gender categories and what that means and how there are people of more expansive gender identities out there and there are so many more identities and there are different kinds of people and different ways to be a person. Uh, And we'll go into all of that, usually in the spring towards the end of the school year. Uh, I self-published in 2018, started writing the book in 2016. Without further ado, let's hear Lourdes read their book, They Call Me Mix. You will hear some reading in English and some in Spanish. They call me Mix. Me llaman Maestre. Are you a boy or a girl? How can you be both? Some days, I'm both. Some days, I'm neither. Most days, I'm everything in between. Before I was born, 
My mom had two different names ready for me, Daniel and Lourdes. I would be Daniel, like my tío, if they decided I was a boy, and Lourdes, like my tía, if they decided I was a girl. Both names come from my mom's siblings in Mexico. When I was born, everyone decided and agreed that I was a girl, so they named me Lourdes. As a kid, I never felt like just a girl. I never felt right knowing everyone was deciding and agreeing that I was a girl. I also didn't feel like just a boy. I knew in my heart that I could never choose one or the other. I knew in my heart that I wanted to be free every day to just be me without thinking about choosing only girl or only boy. I always felt like a little of both. I wanted people to believe me. I wanted people to celebrate me. I imagined myself like a book. My outside cover told only one part of my story. Inside, I was bursting with imagination. Even though I knew this, I still didn't know how to explain it to anyone else but myself, so I went on agreeing with what others called me. Agreeing with others was like ignoring my heart. Ignoring your heart makes everything very difficult. You should never ignore your heart. Have you ever noticed how almost everything is divided into boys and girls? People create categories because they think it makes life easier. This kind of thinking is binary. It's either one or the other. En español se diría que este tipo de pensar es binario. Es uno o el otro. But when it comes to people, especially people like me, Gender categories like boy and girl make so many things difficult. What should I do? Where do I fit in? Where can I fit in? Here, aquí, we are transgender. We're not one or the other. We flow free like water in a river. We are non-binary. Somos no binarios. We're both and everything in between. Everything makes sense. I understand more of who I am now. I can share how I feel now. I learned it's okay to disagree with everyone who looks at me and says I'm a girl. It's okay to say, I'm not just a girl or just a boy. I'm both and everything in between. Instead of she, you can just say my name or use they. Go ahead, try it. Aprendí que está bien estar en desacuerdo con todos los que me ven y dicen que soy niña. Está bien decir, no soy solo una niña ni soy solo un niño. Soy de los dos y todo entre los dos. En vez de ella, puedes decir mi nombre o usar ella. Many people understand that my gender is something for only me to decide. They ask what I'd like to be called. They learn to use non-binary words for me like they or just my name. They support me. Muchas personas entienden que mi género es mi propia, propia decisión. Me preguntan cómo me gustaría que me llamen. Aprenden a usar palabras no binarias para mí, como ella o solo mi nombre. Me apoyan. And some people cannot understand how it is possible for me to disagree with them and decide on my own gender. They continue saying I'm a girl. They continue using the pronoun she for me. Sometimes they even use hurtful words towards me. They disregard how I feel and what I need. I stay away and try to ignore them. I stay away and try to remember that they have some learning to do. I stay away and try not to let it bother me too much. Thankfully, I met and made friends with other smart, talented, and beautiful non-binary people. We get together and do fun things like have barbecues, play games, build bonfires, go camping, go on bike rides, watch movies, make art, attend protests, create films, take pictures of each other, dance a lot, cook food together. We listen to each other. We believe each other. We celebrate each other. I grew up and became a teacher. I'm a non-binary teacher. Soy maestre. 
I'm a non, I, I teach my students about respecting all genders. We practice with each other. Les enseño a mis estudiantes a respetar gente de todos los géneros. Practicamos uno con el otro. I teach my students that non-binary people look, dress, and sound all kinds of different ways. I teach my students that it's okay to change and play with words to make them fit us. My students learn to call me Mix Lourdes because I'm a mix. Mis estudiantes aprenden a llamarme maestre porque soy de los dos. And you too can decide for yourself. If you ever feel in your heart that you don't agree with what people say you are, remember that there are many of us out there cheering you on. Speak your truth. Live your truth. Habla tu verdad. Vive tu verdad. Being transgender is being free. Ser transgénero es ser libre. Being transgender is fearless. Ser transgénero es valiente. Being transgender is beautiful. Ser transgénero es lindo. And that's the end of the story. Thank you for listening. Afterward, we spoke to Lourdes a little more about the message of their book and what they're excited about for Pride Month. I think the main message is definitely the ending, which is that it's beautiful to just be transgender and to be who you are, um, that how, how you are is great and perfect exactly as you are and, and as you become and evolve into who you want to be. Um, and, and really, it's centered on, on my story, just because, yeah, I made it for my classroom and I, the students have a relationship to me. Um, but I'm, I hope that people who also identify as non-binary and transgender um, find it useful for them to share with young people. What I'm most excited about Pride is being surrounded by lovely community, loving community, loving people, all accepting, and just feeling free to be myself and to bask in the love of community. You can find They Call Me Mix, my Me Llaman Maestre, at your local public library. If it's not available, you can request that they order the book. You can also find it at any um, local bookstore and if it's not there you can also request that they carry the book and that'll help get the word out. That was Lourdes Rivas, kindergarten teacher and author, speaking with us about their book, They Call Me Mix. Thank you for listening to this second installment of the Drag Storytime series. We heard from Panda Dulce, founding member of Drag Storytime, and Lourdes Rivas, author of They Call Me Mix. A special thank you to Joemi and Trish at the Berkeley Unified School District for hosting our visit during AAPI Heritage Month, and the kindergartners of BUSD for having us in your classroom. It was a blast. See and hear other drag story readers on KPFA's website, YouTube page, and other social media. KPFA's Drag Storytime series is produced and edited by me, videographer Peter Stickney, and Eric Jansen. For KPFA, I'm EA. Happy Pride! What matters the most is your 100% who you are. That's right. And you just have to dress it down. Yes. Every person just I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you want to find more KPFA radio content, log on to www.kpfa.org. Also follow us on social media by visiting Facebook at KPFA 94.1 and Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at KPFA Radio. Plus, check out our KPFA TV video content on YouTube and Twitch.tv at KPFA Radio.